All right, I've had uh, several people ask for me to talk about phase lock loops. And so we will start with one of the oldest parts I know, uh, the CD4046. So it's a good one to start with. Uh, you get them super cheap these days, like 50 cents or something. Um, but this is a very slow part. This is uh, goes up to, I think, a megahertz, something like that. Uh, probably says in here somewhere. But it's a, it's a pretty slow part. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, VS 1.3 megahertz is, is as high as this thing can go. Um, so what is um, a phase lock loop to begin with? A uh, phase lock loop is you have, basically you have two signals. You have two oscillating signals and they can have the same frequency, but they might not have the same phase, right? And they could be a little bit different in frequency and then they'll drift off. And so their phase will change with time. And um, this can be really annoying sometimes. And you want to make sure that these two signals will lock and the phase will be the same always. They'll be locked together, okay? So that's what phase locking means, right? Loop just means that um, there is a loop between detecting the phase and then doing something about it, okay? There's some type of feedback loop that can happen, right? You're going you're gonna to see that the phase is wrong, detect that, and then the circuit's going to do something to make the phase right. Okay, and that's the that's the loop. That's kind of like a feedback loop. Okay, so let's talk about the forty forty six uh, in particular, and um, how it's how it's constructed. We're not going to talk about everything on this chip, but we're going to get some basic ideas out of the way. So the chip has a lot of functionality and can do a lot of different things, but we're just going to do one thing we are going to lock phases. Uh, that's what we're going to do, okay? So the diagram here is a bit confusing, but basically a phase lock loop has two things. It has a phase detector, okay? What does a phase detector do? Um, it can be a phase detector, phase comparator. The, the, this one's calling it a phase comparator, but that's the thing that we're going to use to say, you know, is the phase correct or is it not correct? And by how much, like how bad is it? And is it in this direction or is this direction? That's what we're going to do here. Okay. So we're going to find out what the phase is and then we will come around and do something about it. Well, what are we going to do? Well, um, we generally will look at the phase of two different signals. Okay. And one of them is over here, one of them is over here. This one will be controlled, let's say, by a voltage controlled oscillator, okay? So we can manipulate this one. We can change its phase because we can change its frequency um, with a voltage, okay? And so you can imagine that uh, really the, the basics here is that we are going to phase detect. We're going to input that into our VCO and then we're going to phase detect again, and this is our loop. This is our feedback loop. Phase detect, change the VCO. Phase detect, change the VCO. And it will do this until the two phases lock, okay? And so that's what we're going to try to demonstrate here in some experiments. Now, uh, this one has two different types of phase comparators. We're only going to talk about one of them. And it has one VCO, but it has a couple different modes in the VCO. It doesn't really matter. It's a VCO, okay? And so it's going to have a, a resistor and an inductor, okay? And uh, not an inductor, a resistor and a capacitor. And that's going to set like a center frequency. And then whatever voltage we give it, it'll move, it'll move depending on what voltage we give it, okay? But it needs something to get going. It needs some range. And so we're going to have a resistor to ground and a capacitor across two pins. And that will set the, uh, uh, that will set the oscillator here, okay? So let's go over here to our circuit. Um, so I've got the 4046 in here and I have a potentiometer uh, in the circuit, okay? So 
how am I going to use this thing? Okay, so the uh, VCO has an input voltage, okay? And I'm going to take my VCC and ground, and I'm going to use a potentiometer to uh, create what's called VN, okay? So this is a, a, a voltage that I'm going to input to our VCO. So if I change this voltage, hopefully the VCO will change, okay? That's what it means, <laughs> all right? And so um, I, will, I will grab this little blue potentiometer here, and it's oscillating. And if I move the potentiometer, then I can change the uh, I can change the frequency. So I can go down here. It's fifth, uh, 85 kilohertz. I can go really fast. I can go up to 200 kilohertz. Okay. So there's a, there's a range which this thing will operate. Okay. So as you change the voltage, it changes the frequency. That's what a VCO does. It's a voltage controlled oscillator. Okay. So now that we have a voltage controlled oscillator. Okay, the next thing that we need to talk about is what is a phase converter or a phase detector, not converter, a phase detector uh, or a phase comparator. So I wanted to say a phase comparator. Well, um, we are going to draw a picture. Okay, let's talk about two clocks. Let's, let's draw one clock here. Okay. And we'll draw another clock over here. And doesn't really matter. Okay, so uh, obviously they're a little bit different. Okay, so they're not in phase. Um, what is phase? Phase is that this rising edge and this rising edge, they're not happening at the same time. Okay, or if there is a delay here, then this rising edge to this rising, rising edge, well, the distance is getting bigger, okay? And so it's not the same frequency, but we want to be, we want to have this. So how do we, how do we determine if they're the same, okay? Well, we could just kind of subtract the two. If this is A and this is B, we could just kind of like subtract B, right? And uh, we would get zero here. And then if we subtracted this, it would go down. And then it would go zero, zero here, and then it'd be this one go high. And uh, you would have these these events, right? So we can draw it a little more accurately. Okay, these edges are going to happen at different times. Okay, and so uh, another way to look at either add or subtract them is we'll do something called an exclusive or. An or means that you can have one or the other, but not both. Okay. If you can have one high, one low, but you can't have too high, you can't have too low. So we're going to start out with one, one. Okay, that's a zero. Okay, so over here in this range, it's a, it's a zero. Over here, we have one high, one low, that's a one. Here we have low, low, that's a zero. Here we have high, low, that's a one. Uh, here we have high, high, that's a zero. Um, here we have low, high, that's a one. Here we have high, low, that's a one. And here we have low, low, that's a zero, okay? And so if you draw this sort of as a waveform, then it will be high sometimes and low sometimes. And it will change depending on the, the relationships of this thing. Now. If A and B were exactly the same signal, then they'd always be the same. And what does an exclusive OR do? An exclusive OR says, well, that's zero. You can't have them both high. You can't have them both low. low. That's always a zero, okay? And um, if they are completely different, okay, one is always high, one is always low, then you always get ones, okay? And you have to think about it, but if you have them in phase with one another, the, the amount of highs and the amount of lows will average out, okay? And because, because they're the same, it'll either go, they're perfectly the same, it'll go to zero, that's averaging out. Um, or it can kind of go to a 50%. They're half the time they're high, half the, half the, time, half the time they're low, okay? And it, it, it does give you some information about, it does give you, give you some information about phase. I know that's not a very good explanation, um, but uh, 
for a simple simple situation, if you think about an exclusive ore, if half of the time it's high and half of the time it's low, the, ex the exclusive ore averages out to 50%, then these two things uh, are basically going to be in phase. Um, and that's what we have here in the that's what we have here in the 4046, okay? It's drawn exactly as an exclusive ore, right? We have an input that goes into one of the inputs. We have the comparator in. So there are two inputs. One's called signal in and one's called comparator in. And they go into this exclusive ore and they come out and they say um, they are uh, phase comparator one. And then there's a phase comparator two circuit. I'm not going to talk about that and you get to choose which one, okay? Um, so we'll take a look at that on some waveforms, okay? But I want to talk about one thing before we get there, um, and that is when I said that sometimes it could be high, sometimes it could be low, and on average at 50% is good, well, that's taking an average. That's taking a mathematical average. Well, how do you take a mathematical average a really easy way? Well, you just put it through an RC network, right? If you are just filtering it, low-pass filtering it, um, you're basically kind of summing on a capacitor all of the values. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, but it'll average out, okay? It's like taking a ripple of a, of, of a power supply and averaging it out, right? It'll average out the highs and the lows, and it'll give you the average, and uh, that's what this capacitor is going to do. It's going to give us an average, okay? and uh, that average they have come back into the VCO. So uh, don't worry if you're lost. Uh, we'll show you some waveforms. I think it'll make sense. Um, so what else does the 4046 have in it? It's got this other really weird thing here. It's got a, it's got a Zener diode in it. <laughs> it's just amazing. I'd forgotten all about that, but it, it has a Zener diode stuck in it. Uh, that's kind of weird. It also has a, a source follower. So you can buffer this VCO in with a source follower and bring it out so you can drive things. Um, and uh, they call it demodulator out. You can use these as demodulators. I'm not going to go in that out today. We're just going to talk about phase locking right now. Um, but uh, yeah, it has a couple other things built in. But uh, this is really what we want to get across today. You have a phase detector that feeds into a VCO. It goes back into the phase detector, and this will go around and around and around. It'll balance itself out such that the average is always the same, and then you'll be phase locked. Let's go take a look at those things. Okay, let me explain the circuit before we take a look at some waveforms. I have a 555 timer, and I can adjust it, and I have a VCO, and I can adjust it. So I'm going to have two signals. I'm going to show those on the, uh, on the oscilloscope, okay? Uh, and uh, this is going to be the uh, trace number. Let me look at how my, my oscilloscope is hooked up. Uh, this is trace number three. Uh, no, trace number, this is trace number three. And this will be trace number two. So this will be a cyan trace and this will be a magenta trace. All right. And then um, we are going to take those two signals and we're going to run them through a phase detector, okay? And so let me draw the phase detector. It's just an exclusive OR gate, okay? So one of these signals and the other signal will come into this exclusive OR gate, all right? And this will come out, and uh, we will be examining this with pin 1 on the oscilloscope, okay? And that's what our traces will be, all right? Pin 1 and uh, pin, pin 2, pin 3, or tri channel one, channel two, channel three on the oscilloscope, okay? And we'll take a look at those. Now the next thing that we can do is we can take an average of this signal, simple as this, 0 0.01 and a 10K, which are my favorite components. <laughs> so this is not designed very well, it's just kind of haphazardly put together. Uh, this is going to generate a voltage uh, depending on the average state of this uh, exclusive OR gate, right? Sometimes it'll be high, sometimes it'll be low. This will take some average voltage, all right? And then some somewhere along uh, when I'm showing you the next waveforms, I'm going to take uh, the uh, control voltage of the VCO, and instead of having it hooked to an, a, a potentiometer, I'm going to hook it to, I'm going to hook it to here. 
and uh, this will phase lock at that point in time. It'll say, okay, the VCO will change until the average of this pulses here will equal some steady state. And so that will be when they're both in phase. When these are both in phase, we will get an average of 50% duty cycle out of the exclusive OR gate, and um, it will satisfy everything and the thing will be in phase lock loop. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, what we're showing here is uh, we have, uh, let me see here, channel two is going to channel three. Okay, so um, this is the um, output of the VCO, all right? And this is our 555 timer. And we would like the two to be in phase, okay? So I'm gonna reach over and I'm gonna tweak our tweak our VCO a little bit. And you can see that we're getting fairly close in frequency. Now, the top trace here, the, the yellow trace, is the actual um, exclusive or uh, phase detector, okay? And you can see that when it's out of phase, uh, it's going to be changing up there, right? And um, what we want is, you can see there, when it almost gets into a steady state, this, this top trace will become still. And if we take the top trace, which is a, a, a digital trace, zeros and ones basically, and if we do an average of that circuit, we do an average, if it's mostly high, then that voltage will be high, the average will be high. If it's mostly low, then it's, it's a average will be low, okay? And so we can do that by putting it into an RC filter. We can put it into a low pass filter and average that. Um, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run it into a 10K 0.01 microfarad low pass filter. And uh, here I've done that. And you can see that, well, boom, we've, we've, we've immediately gone into phase lock. Um, our phase detector is now uniform. It's basically 50% high, 50% low. And uh, our VCO has changed to the exact frequency of the 555 timer. And it doesn't matter if the 555 timer drifts or not. In fact, I'm going to reach over and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, to change the frequency of the 555 time. Oops, sorry. I just whacked you guys. I'm going to change the frequency of the 555 timer. And you can see that everybody moves, right? We're changing the 555 timer, but it doesn't matter. That VCO is going to track it. It's going to say, okay, I'm going to change my frequency such that the uh, average of that uh, phase comparator equals uh, 50%, and I'm, and I'm cool. Everything's good to go. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's an amazing, <laughs> it's an amazing thing. It's, the, 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 the thing that, find, that I find the most amazing is the simplicity of it. <laughs> um, we're using an exclusive OR gate. That's it. That's it. We have a VCO. Okay, we've built VCOs before, right? So a voltage controlled oscillator. And we have these two signals running into an exclusive OR gate. So, so this is A, this is B, this is the exclusive OR of A plus B, or A and B. And um, that's all it is. <laughs> that's all it is. Now, we take the average of this to control the VCO. But if I decontrol the VCO, I just put it on a, uh, a fixed a fixed voltage, uh, a rheostat, so I can uh, I can change the uh, frequency. Let's see if I can twiddle a little bit here and try to get the two more in phase. This is kind of hard to do. Maybe it'd be better if I just take a single sweep and you can kind of just take a look at it. Um, so you can see that the exclusive OR is changing because the two traces are basically, um, one's moving with respect to the other and you start getting this pattern on the, on the exclusive OR, right? Um, and the closer you are, go back to free run, the closer you are, uh, then, that start, oh, then that starts to be, behave itself. 
and it's very hard to go figure out which direction to go from from where I'm starting right now. Yeah, I can't really. Oh, uh, so there we go. There we go. Ah. So you can see it's kind of trying, you know. You can see that exclusive or between the two. All right. But if I move that VCO pin over to our averaging filter, bang, it locks in. It's phase locked. Okay, well, I hope that helps. A uh, very brief introduction on a CD4046. I treated it very, very simplistically. To do a, a face lock loop correctly, it's much more complicated. It's not just an average, uh, a simple RC average filter. You really need to do some mathematics to get it to get it really playing correctly. In this particular setup, it's, it's kind of doesn't really matter too much, but you really need to pay a lot of attention to uh, uh, to that RC network. Um, there's a bunch of parameters that you need to worry about um, of whether the thing will settle or not. There's a bunch of diagrams over which voltages and ranges, what type of resistor you use, what type of capacitor you use, and what will be the center frequency. Um, so a bunch of things like that. Um, there's uh, some design information, like these are the steps you should go through. You know, here's the range of frequencies you're going to use. Um, you can offset things instead of just going from from minimum to maximum. You can offset things within a range by doing certain things. Uh, you can calculate what frequency locks range you're going to be able to get. Here's here's a calculation of that of that RC network that you need to get right. Um, the loop filter is what it's called. Um, make sure that phase angles are correct and things. So anyway, yeah, you need to pay a lot of attention to, 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 to use them correctly. And uh, uh, there's also kind of hinted in the, uh, in the original uh, circuit here, maybe I'll do a different video, where you uh, take the VCO and you divide it down. So let's say your VCO is operating at uh, uh, 100 kilohertz but the signal coming in is only 10 kilohertz. You can take your VCO, you can divide it by 10 before you compare the two. And so you can do phase comparison on two different frequencies if there are multiple of each other, okay? And uh, fancy, fancy phase lock loops can have both multipliers and div dividers, and uh, you can dial it in to have exact frequency stuff. But that's a different complicated subject, and maybe we'll talk about that someday. But today, phase lock, it's pretty simple.